Welcome to Crowded Lab. Today I have on review Boost Space and I will explain in this video what is this tool about because it is not so straightforward what you can do with that. So basically it is kind of alternative to Airtable and Zapier but I would say just a little bit to Airtable and more of alternative to Zapier. It's kind of a mix of both. So with Airtable you are able to organize your data in nice tables in different formats. So this part is present in Boost Space. You will be able to organize data in tables and store your data inside Boost Space but arguably with less flexibility than Airtable. I will tell about that later in the video. And there is another part, integration. So here you can configure sources of your data. There can be multiple sources for one table or one data set like contacts. You can feed your contacts from Google Form, from Shopify, from other places and you can set up some rules which will help you to avoid duplicate records in your table. And then in the same way you can share the data using integrations, you can send emails through MailChimp or other email tool, you can do whatever you want with your data. And this integration part so you can see there are close to 2000 applications ready for you to synchronize with. So this part Boost Space achieves in partnership with make.com. We can see in the reviews there is kind of guess that it is a white label partnership with make.com where they have all make.com connections available and in the reply the founders, they do not confirm that, but they do not deny that neither. And partnering with make.com is not a bad thing. This is a well-known integrator. It is alternative to Zapier. As you can see, they state that they replace Zapier. So I believe Boost.Space partnered with make.com to make integrations available to their tool. Let's quickly take a look at license tiers. So with all of those you get all integrations available and the limitations will be in operations per month. For example, if you read a record, store in database and share, I suppose it is three operations, then the limit of records, how much can you store in your database. And for example, you can have different tables like contact, offers so see for yourself how many records you plan to have and license tier 3 increases limits so you will have 200,000 operations per month with 20,000 records so real increase compared to license tier 1 well let's move to the actual demo of this software and before we start I must say that if you would like to try this software you need to be prepared to a bit of longer onboarding. To my taste, they ask too many questions during the onboarding, like what is the size of your business, what is your goal, and they repeat it several times. But anyway, not a big deal. Okay, so what do you have here? There are three parts. The first one is modules. Here it is. You can see all of these modules and you can add a few more. Then you will have part which is called connect data where you will be able to set up data sources for your modules and tables. And then you will be able to set up integrations to share your data. But basically there are two parts. Modules, it is where your data will be stored. And connect data, it is your inbound feed of data. And share data, it is how you will share the data stored in your tables. So what does it mean to have modules? Module is a table where your data will be stored. And there are kind of pre-built ones. Let's take a look, for example, at the contacts. 
So imagine you would like to have your own CRM system where you will be storing the contacts from different sources. So you will go to that module. And first, what you need to do is to create your space. You give it a name, go next, let's share it with everyone. And here it is, both the weak and the strong part of boost.space. So the weak part, I think, is that you will need to spend some time to understand how to set up that system. So you see it first time, something you need to connect, there are different fields popping up, but don't worry, it is not so bad. I will explain what's going on. And the good thing is that boost.space provides you with base templates so you can start building your CRM system quicker. So what's happening here? You are given some predefined fields which are typically present in a database record for a particular contact. So this is your basic information. This is field group. You can create your own. Maybe not on this step, but later you will be able to add your own fields. So we are starting with basic information and we can connect or add additional fields as we need. So each contact may be part of some company. So you can see here additional fields. Let's actually connect those. So I believe in the database we'll have basic information and company information. So let's do not connect others. But as you can see, we can create group manually ourselves. Moving to the next step, we can set up the field by which we'll be distinguishing duplicates. So the duplicates will be merged in one. So let it be main email. So by this field, we will be distinguishing the duplicates. And now let's create this space. Okay, so here's our space. And actually we can create you more and also there should be ability to create subspaces we can try to do that and using subspaces we can probably limit information and give only limited view over main space to a particular user so let's go next So inside contacts, we are having another space with limited the number of fields, which will contain only basic information. I don't know actually if you populate all contacts, if it will go to this space. I assume that yes. Okay, so what can you do with your data? You can create a contact manually. Let's create that. We can populate additional information, as you can see to the right. These all fields were pre-built for us. And here down below, you can see group of the fields for the company. And I did not set up anything of that. It was all pre-built. So that's the power of boost space that you can set up your CRM quicker. So here it is the record in our database. And what can you do next? So here at the top of the page, you can see different parts. So we are now at the organize phase where we created the data structure. So what can we do? we can connect data sources. And there could be multiple data sources. There are close to 2,000 different applications. For example, if you type Google, there are all sorts of Google integrations. I think it will have the majority of what you need. There is also webhook integration. And what's important, there is HTTP integration. So you can create custom requests virtually to any tool that provides integration point. So regarding integrations, 
just an example, maybe you want to collect your contacts from a particular Google form. So you will choose that kind of integration. And then you will start creating your scenarios. So here we can see another drawback of boost space. It is a bit over complicated. For example, there are three choices here. General import, no map field. Then very similar, a general template for known asset tools with pre-configured flow. What is the difference? It is not very clear. If you read help, you will still need to Google what do they mean by asset feature here. Then you have another option, create scenario from scratch. But on the other hand, it is a very powerful tool and you will be able to set up virtually any kind of inbound data feeds and outbound data feeds. But maybe you will need to spend just a little bit of time to find out how to work with this tool. In this case, let's create scenario from scratch. We can see pre-populated fields, so data will go to all contacts table. Records will be merged by main email, so no duplicates of emails will be in our result table. Custom fields and etc. So once you hit continue, you will then be directed to additional integration steps. So after your integration is ready, I believe you will have a very nice structured way of seeing what kind of inbound sources for data there are. So let's move to continue to integrator. And here it is actually your workflow builder. Okay, we search here. I don't know why we need select one time because I have chosen my source already, but anyway, let it be Google form. And here we are getting different kind of triggers. Let's say when we get a form submitted, we can feed the data to our table. And here you will actually need to connect a particular form. So you get the idea. You will have this nice integration builder and you will be able to set up your inbound data feeds. So what else can we do with our data? We will be able to share that. And here you will have similar flow. You will be able to connect different applications. For example, let's select MailChimp to feed the contact that we got. Okay, so what else can we do here? There is a data flow part and I believe in this view you will be able to see your table of your inbound and outbound integrations. And here is the example of data flow. You will see your table, your data. You will see to the right the outbound integrations and to the left you will see inbound integrations. Okay, so you get the idea how you can set up different kind of integrations for your data. And if you go back to our modules, you will see pre-built templates for different kind of data besides contacts. For example, there is model for your orders. And here you will be able to do similar things. First, you need to create workspace. This one I already created. This is the table. So we can create new order. And here are all the fields which were pre-built by boost.space. So I did not create all of those fields. Those were given for me right away. Okay, so you get the idea. You will have other different modules for your CRM system. And some modules will have different view. For example, here is calendar. So it is not just a table, but it is indeed a calendar where you can add your events. All right, moving to the conclusion. 
and I would like to start with some drawbacks that I noticed. So the first one is a bit of learning curve that you will need in order to be able to use this tool successfully because user interface is not always clear. You will need to spend some time to understand this tool, but in general, it's not a big deal. What else, in my opinion, can be improved? So boost.space says that they are alternative to Airtable, but this is not the right comparison because boost space provides just basic view for the table, at least what I saw, and with Airtable you will be able to have other ways of representing your table structure. But anyway, the piece of storing data inside boost space is there and you can store all kinds of data in a unified way. So moving to the strong part of this tool, it is the integrations. So you will have all the integrations and seems all the integrations that make.com provides. So you have a lot of tools to integrate with. And there is integrator interface, which will allow you to build your workflows. For example, you can collect contacts information when someone submits a Google form or any other form. But again, compared to some tools like Active Pieces, which was available on AppSumo some time ago, Boost Space user interface is a bit harder to use. But again, Active Pieces provides integration with close to 200 tools, and Boost Space gives you connections to close to 2000. All right, so that's where my thoughts about boost.space. To get this tool, please check my links in the description. Please also give this video a like and subscribe for more similar videos. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.